Hello, informed pregnancy fans. It is Hilary Duff. I am so honored that you voted to bring back my interviews with Dr. Berlin for the holiday hiatus. Listening to the podcast helped me during my own pregnancies, and I hope my episode helps you feel informed and empowered and ready for your own great experience. Thank you all for your support and for joining me in this crazy, fun, wild, rewarding, and absolutely exhausting club that is parenthood. Best wishes to you guys and happy holidays. I hope you have an incredible new year. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a whole lot of questions for you. This kid's gonna test my will. I got a lot to learn and my baby. Welcome to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Elliot Berlin, and joining me today is a New York Times bestselling author, and she is also a gold and platinum recording artist and has been all over our big and small screens as an award-winning actress for more than 20 years. She's an entrepreneur and philanthropist, and six years ago, she produced her first human child with a sequel due out any day now. Hilary Duff, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> I like that. God, 20 years, that is so scary. Doesn't that seem like a long time? Yes. I can't picture you 20 years ago. Um, although you were doing cool stuff. Unfortunately, there's lots of uh, Google images. So of you 20 years ago? Can I can't picture you. <laughs> it's all, uh, there's so much evidence out there. <laughs> I'm going to look. Um, I'm super impressed by you and by your very multifaceted career successes. And I think I could do a whole episode of how I built this uh, on just that stuff. But we only have about an hour, unless your water breaks. Oh my gosh, please. Oh, please. If, or, my please. Water, if my water could break right now, that would be the coolest thing. It trick. would be the best podcast we ever did, <laughs> by far. Um, and uh, so I want to chat primarily about pregnancy, childbirth, and motherhood. For context, you were born and started growing up in Texas mm -hmm. with your older sister and family. When did you move to Los Angeles? I think I was about 11. Um, we didn't permanently move right away. We came out here with hopes and dreams like everybody else. And, um, you know, kind of figured out there's like a season for like TV shows and there's like a commercial season and a movie season. And it lasts like each season kind of lasts when castings are happening for like, you know, two or three months. And so we would come out for like a couple months at a time and then... Sorry, you get a lot of dog licks. I love here. all the dogs. <laughs> they rule the roost. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we kind of came out and tested the waters, and then we would go back to Texas and go back to school, and then we would book jobs, and it would become more and more permanent. And then... Um, How does that work with school, if you come for a few months at a time? At first, the schools were cool with it. My mom kind of... <laughs> Uh, I mean, my mom was incredibly supportive, which was awesome. Like Haley and I, Haley's my sister. Um, she and I really were like dead set on being actors. And um, my mom really listened, which was cool. Um, and she was like, well, you give this ice skaters at the school their homework ahead of time. Like, why can't you do it for this? Well, she went to bed for you. Yeah. And so she would like administer... Yeah, and it, that worked for a little bit, and then it didn't work anymore. And then we started being homeschooled with, like, programs, um, like, curriculum in Los together? Angeles. You're, you and your sister together? Uh, well, we'd have different curriculums because she's two different and a half ages. years older than me, yeah. yeah. But but there's all kinds of alternative schooling here in California, so we tried quite a few. And then when we would book a job, we would have, like, tutors on set. When you say alternative schooling, is that classrooms that are not traditional school or just one-on-one? -on -one? Alternative schooling because it's built for kids that are, like, going on auditions during the day, but they need, like, three hours of, of you know, studying and, and a teacher there to help you through your work. But is it one-on-one -on -one or are you with other kids following their hopes and dreams? A lot of the times you're with other kids following their hopes. Okay, and so you also you have social interaction. Yeah. But is that competitive? Are you are you competing for the same hopes and dreams? Oh yeah. So Seeing it's all like, those people at the same auditions. Oh right. So your classmates are your are your competitors. Yeah. 
That's but isn't that the, but isn't that the same as if you're competing for something in school or you know soccer or whatever sports? Yeah, I mean, yeah, a little bit, maybe yeah. less intense. Yeah, I think it's how you look at it. I mean, I think my mom helped us have a healthy, competitive side without being a jerk about it, you know, like, Hey, I really want this job, but if I don't get it, I hope you get it. Kind yeah, of thing. It's a cool combo. And by the way, my sister and I would go on the same auditions all the time. Competing with each other. Yeah. Sometimes. The the, yeah. Sometimes the cast. Does that get hard between you? Um, no, no, we would help each other with our lines and to be like much easier for my, my mom. Cause she would only have one like material and we would work to on work it together. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Uh, and then did that continue all the way through high school? So I didn't go to high school. I did middle school, and then I did a few high school classes. You did middle school the same way? like uh, On set. On set. And then I got my GED, and then I was kind of a dropout. Yeah. There you go, kids. <laughs> <laughs> this I'm going to have a lot of fun explaining that to my kids someday. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people now, especially, are are rethinking how we educate. Yeah. So it's cool to see that you can go through an alternative route and still be pretty successful. Mm-hmm. Um, how old were you when you got married? You know what? That time frame for me is so blurry. It's a blur? Yes, but I think I was 22. Okay. Because I was married for a year before I got pregnant, and I had Luca at 25. Were you, I mean, was that early in your mind for getting pregnant or your friends? I mean, were I had, married or pregnant? I think both. But if you think about it, I've had a job since I was 12 years old, like working adult hours and responsibilities and tours across the world. And I think I was just ready for more. You know, I met someone who I really loved and I felt like I needed in my life. And we dated for... How long do we date? I guess I met Mike when I was 19. So, yeah, it was really early. I was very young, but I, I mean, but a lot to had the happened. Average. A lot had happened in my life early, you know? Career wise. Career wise. Because yeah, eight years into your career, a lot of people are ready to get married. They're just not 19. Right. Yeah. And after you got married, were you like, hey, let's have a kid? I think we both knew we wanted to have kids early on and um, we lived in different cities. He was a hockey player. So he, um, we weren't like together all the time. There'd be months where we'd be like visiting each other back and forth and I'd be here in LA and he'd be playing hockey. And then, uh, yeah, we decided together we were like both ready for that. If you could be in the same city for a minute. Yeah, it sounds like we had to figure that out. Yes, <laughs> I imagine so. A lot of scheduling involved. Is it hard to be married and not really be around your spouse for long periods of the year? I think being in entertainment and touring my most of my adult life, I got really used to having relationships like that. I guess the technology makes it easier than it used to be. Yeah, and this was like before FaceTime, though. Hmm. Which is really weird. I know. People are going to be listening to this and thinking there was a time before Before FaceTime. FaceTime? My kids will freak out. Yeah. What does that mean? (laughs) Uh, When you got pregnant, when did you start thinking, well, how was pregnancy for you? Um, you, Where were you work-wise at that point? I was taking time off. So I worked from like... Well, look, from like 12 to about 20, 21, nonstop. And, Slacker. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, when I met my um, ex-husband, I, um, I was like, I need to just chill. I need to... I'm really happy, you know, I'm, I've done so much, but I need to like, just take a moment and enjoy what I've worked so hard for and figure out what my next moves are, who I am as an adult now, you know, how to make decisions on my own. Um, I learned that I love to cook. Oh, I loved that. I, I learned that I loved interior design. Like there was all this stuff really? that, well, that explains my house. <laughs> there was all these like hobbies that I was like, Oh, I have 
I have things that I like, you know, and that I enjoy outside. I love knitting. Really? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I took a big break. And during that time was when I got pregnant and I had a really smooth pregnancy. And I was a little scared because I knew no one who was pregnant. No, not one of my friends had a baby. I had like never been around a newborn before. Babies. Yeah. Uh, first of all, all of those things that you mentioned are like, I feel like they're all just different mediums of art. Like right. cooking is mm-hmm. one form of art and interior design, knitting. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You're just an artist. You're exploding <laughs> with art. Um, so you're pregnant, but you don't have any friends who are pregnant. And um, how was it? I mean, it's a big change when, you know, first of all, traveling all over the place and working so hard. And then when you were pregnant, you were just not traveling around? Right. Do you remember what that was like for you? I didn't just get pregnant and then stop working. I had kind of been like on my, I don't want to work and make big decisions right now. I want to like chill and enjoy my life. And then I got pregnant and then it was, um, we decided to move homes. So that was kind of a project for me. Together? Uh Uh-huh. And then, um, I don't know, it was, it was, it was a hard, I had an easy pregnancy with the sweetest baby who didn't give me a hard day, but I, uh, you know, throughout the whole entire thing. But I, I remember being like, this is lo- like, I don't, I had to work really hard to make an effort with new people and like get involved in classes and stuff like that. Just a different community than you were a part of before. Yeah. I mean, all my friends were like partying and like hitting the clubs and stuff. Different. Yeah. Um, Do you remember how you found out you were pregnant? Yes. So I knew I was pregnant the second it happened. I was like, that was the time. Wow. And yeah. And um, we were going on a trip to Europe. And I remember taking the test like a week after feeling so different in my body, feeling bloated, feeling tired, like really, really tired. I felt like I had this pull in my, like this like tug in my tummy. Hmm. And I was, just, I don't know if it was all mental or what, but I was like, I know I'm pregnant. And it was too early to say. So the test was negative when we were in Europe. Oh. And he was like... <laughs> He's like, you think you're pregnant 12 times a year. You're always worried that you're pregnant. Like, we, Had you been trying for a while? We had been trying, but we, I told you we were living in different cities. Oh, right. So it made it really tough. Yeah. So we had been trying, but we weren't like stressing trying. Yeah. And then, um, and then, yeah. And then I came home and I was like, I know I've, I still have the feeling. And I took the test and it was positive and I got to go rub it in and be like, I just <laughs> But uh, it is wild to look at the test and you're like, oh, how did I, how did I do that? <laughs> it's kind of scary, you know? You spend your whole adult, you spend your whole, I guess, adult life being like, I can't get pregnant, I can't get pregnant, I can't get pregnant. And then... You're pregnant. You're pregnant. And you're like, oh my God, that's how it works. It's a, it's a change forever. <laughs> yes. It's a big moment. Um, how about birth? When did you start thinking about birth and how you'd want to bring the baby into the world? Well, I was terrified to give birth. Um, I was really scared. I think my closest person in my life is my sister, and she's two and a half years older than me. She hadn't become a parent, a mom yet. And uh, I was dead set on having this, like finding out a way to have a C-section. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, why? What? What about it? I think I just hadn't... Well, one, like I said, I didn't know anyone who had had any of my peers that had had babies yet. And the thought of... Right, but they didn't have vaginal births or cesarean births. What do you mean? I'm saying you you, you had no familiarity with any way of, of giving birth. Yes, I think just the thought of a baby going through my vagina terrified me. Yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people feel that way. Yes, yeah. It still terrifies me, and I've already done it before. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I had a change of heart um, about uh, maybe midway through my pregnancy. I, I I mentioned this to you, that I saw a psychic. Yeah. And <laughs> I love her. She's she's funny, and I, I tend to see her like twice a year. And um, 
she was like, are you ready for this? And I said, I think so. Like, you know, the room's prepared and blah, blah, blah. She's like, no, no, no. Are you ready to have your baby? And are you like, do you realize like the weight of this and what's happening to your life? And has your baby like, and I was like, oh, well, I'm having a C-section and blah, blah, blah. Like we talked on on a deep level about how it's going to change my life Mm -hmm. and how excited I was for it, but not like the process of how the baby was going to get out. And, um, she's like, I told her I was, I had to have a scheduled C-section and she's like, has the baby given you a hard time? Has it been a hard pregnancy? And I was like, no, he's been like perfect angel. I haven't had one ache or pain. I haven't been sick. Like it's been great. She's like, you should let the baby come out the way he wants to. And it like hit me like a ton of bricks. And I was like, of course I should let the baby come out the way he wants to. And I had a great, a great experience. How far was that from, from your due date? Probably three or four months. Okay. So you had a little time, a little time to plan for it. Yeah. Once you, once you had that shift, did you read books, take a class, watch a video? Did you do other things to prepare for it? Like you said, you had this fear. How did you address Mm -hmm. the fear? I didn't have the same desires as I do now for this kind of experience I'm looking to have for my second child. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely did research. Um, You know, I wanted to have my baby in a hospital and I chose to have an epidural and I knew that I was going to have an epidural. And I talked to enough people and my doctor and friends I had started to make you know, that had kids already and, you know, decided I need to like labor at home as long as I can before I feel like it's time to go. And, but I never thought about like home birth or absolute like natural childbirth. When your labor, how did your labor start? Just kind of one random night. I ate a big spicy bowl of ramen Uh (laughs) and I like to think that that sent me into labor. My neighbors, I was taking so many walks and one of my neighbors was like, still that baby, you haven't had that baby still. And she's like, you should go to have this bowl of ramen down the street. And I'm like, get in the car, let's go. (laughs) And um, yeah, it happened that night at around midnight. I went into labor on my own. Um, I was four weeks and 40 days. Four weeks and no. I mean, sorry, 40 <laughs> days and four weeks. No. 40 weeks 40 and four weeks days. 40 weeks and four <laughs> days. God help me. I'm very pregnant right You're now. You're super pregnant. <laughs> 40 weeks and four days pregnant. And um, Was there any mistake that the, that was labor? No. You knew right away. Mm-hmm. Just like you knew you were pregnant. This is labor. Yeah. I didn't feel a single Braxton Hicks before that, or I didn't have some, you know, Go, we need to go to the hospital and then they send you back home. None of that. Were you more excited when it started? Or I was nervous? so excited. You were excited. Yeah. So you got over the fear. I did. I mean, doesn't every woman, once that you've been pregnant for 40 weeks, you're like, get this thing out of me. I don't like, I, I think the being uncomfortable and wanting to meet your baby so bad, like takes over. And, mm. and you had the psychic. And I had the psychic. So I do think I'm a very intuitive person and I I just, I just had this overwhelming feeling that everything was going to go great. And I have it this time around too, even though I'm a little more nervous for this experience. Yeah. Um, and I have to say everything went great with him. Did you labor at home for a while? Like you were planning I did labor for about three and a half hours and I did my hair during that time too. (laughs) Multitasker. I was like bored. I'm like, I'm pacing up and down the hallway. And I might as well try to have cute hair for this process. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how was your transition to motherhood after the birth? It was wonderful. I mean, it was a lot of big feelings. Um, I felt like I, I knew that this was meant to be my, my big job. My, not, not job, because I guess motherhood is, is a job. But I always knew I wanted to be a mom. And like at a very young age, and I am just... I felt so ready for it and I felt so excited to have Luca and everything just kind of like happened the way it was supposed to and nothing big or scary happened. I do remember feeling a little bit alone, like just with my baby, this 
me and him, we're this unit, you know, and we're going to like figure everything out. Um, but he was a good baby, really good baby. It's really sweet to watch you with him. I don't, I don't know what I did with my time before I had him. Like I I don't, I remember that feeling. I love him so much. I just can look at his face and tears just come to my eyes. Like you, you both light up when you look at each other and you, you just look like you're having so much fun. He has made this journey so much fun. I'm honestly, I, I have that feeling of like, I hope I can love my, I know it's so cliche and everybody says it. I hope I can love my second baby as much as I love him. Yeah. It's, I remember feeling that way even about my kids. And, uh, and you're four deep. No, yeah, we're four deep, <laughs> I think. So, so, how, so how does that work out? It just works. Are There's, you sure? Yeah. I right promise. away? Yeah. Uh, yeah, right away. It's, right away. It's a little, it's a little juggle, you know, for us, it was a little juggle that, the second one came out, and our oldest was two, mm-hmm. and uh, he was all over the little baby girl we had. And uh, I just remember, I think it was about seven or eight days after she was born, mm-hmm. and uh, my sister-in-law was holding her, and she was fussy, and we tried all sorts of things to calm her down, and then she wouldn't calm down, and she said, okay, I'm going to hand you to your mommy. And then she gave her to my wife, mm-hmm. and I saw my two-year-old see that, and it, a light bulb went off in his head. He's like, wait a second, that's my mommy. And then he turned really evil for like two months. He did. He did. He kept trying to like see if he can get the eyeball out of her socket. You couldn't leave him alone. You can't. It's in there pretty good. I know that because he tried a lot of times. Uh, if they were ever alone, she'd have scratches on her face. Like your little angel, my little angel yeah. became this little devil. You think and Luca could be capable of that? I don't that? know. He's older. I th- I'm not sure. He's older. So I'm, probably he'll still have big feelings about yeah. it, but he's better able to express them. He doesn't have to grab her eyeball. Yeah, I really hope he tries to leave her eyeballs alone. <laughs> I think so. Because he's sick, so he should be able to control that. I will tell you a funny thing that happened yesterday that's giving me a little bit of anxiety. But I have to tell you, and you you probably are like, yeah, no, my son's the sweetest thing ever too. But he's so good inside. Like, Luca's all good and so kind and so caring about and so tender with other people's feelings. But yesterday we, we went out to dinner, to dinner, my boyfriend, Luca and I, and they're super tight and he like completely understands the dynamic and knows that like Matt is this little one's dad and, you know, he obviously lives here and whatever. So I'm like, you know, your sister's bringing you a Lego, so you should probably like, maybe let's do something for her. And he's like, oh, I'll make her a picture. And I'm like, that's such a good idea, like a welcome card. He's like, yeah, like a welcome card. So we're at the table, and I've brought, like, some markers for him and paper, and he draws this little tiny baby with, like, one little brown hair on top. (laughs) And all of a sudden, (laughs) all of a sudden, and there's lots of talks. He's very curious about what she's going to look like, right? Uh Because he he knows that, well, his dad has brown hair and Matt has brown hair, but he has blonde hair and I have the blonde hair. He's like, but the baby, I'm like, she could have brown hair. We don't like, no one knows these things, you know? So he draws her, she has green eyes. She has one brown hair. And then all of a sudden this big hammer, right? It's like coming down on the baby. And I'm like, oh, 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 things have, <laughs> things have taken a turn. Things have taken a turn. And he looks at me and he's like kind of smiling mischievously. And he's like, I'm not done yet. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not done with my picture yet. And he's super into uh, like action superheroes and stuff yeah. like that right now. And like drawing his own like comics and stuff. And so he flips the paper around and then he draws a baby and he makes her completely green. And then the hammer is like shattered. So he turned her into the Hulk and she shattered the hammer. Oh, wow. And I was like, you just redeemed yourself. Super we baby. Were about to have <laughs> a big, a big talk. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he'll have big feelings, but uh, he has more ways to express them <laughs> scratching and pulling at eyeballs. Yeah. Um, who came to your first birth? My mother and my sister. And then obviously my, my. Was that the first time your sister was at a birth? Yep. Mm-hmm. And were they helpful for you? Yeah. I think my mom was helpful for me because she's my mom. Yeah. Um, you were at her birth. I was at her birth. Uh, she had two C-sections. Ah. 
um, my sister was born with a short cord. So she labored for a long, 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 long time. Oh, wouldn't come down? Yeah, and the baby wouldn't come down. So she had a C-section, and then I was just a C-section after that. Um, Explains your perfectly round head. Um. My sister was ex- my sister was like holding my knee and like helping me the whole time. She was amazing. That's awesome. Um, and my mom was kind of like hanging back and looking at me like National Geographic. I can't believe my youngest daughter is. Well, it has to be mind blowing. This, <laughs> yeah. And especially her her experience was so different. Also, yes. So she was supportive, and I think it's just always nice to have your your mom there. You know, it's like comforting and loving but she was like oh my god it's gotta be crazy to see your kid yeah. at birth yeah um how soon after you had luca did you go back to work not for a while i didn't i didn't actually get a job until he was almost two so i, I worked i did you know some charity stuff and um you kept busy I always keep busy, but I didn't like have to show up to work for anything. That's really nice. Schedule. To have yeah. Those flexibility. Or did you do anything specific to get your postnatal health? Um, like, were you doing workouts or specific nutrition? Mm-hmm. I I wasn't really dieting. I'm a pretty healthy person, but I generally I'm generally healthy. Um, I indulge when I want to <laughs> mm-hmm. and, um, we're like opposites. Are you really I'm generally indulgent, but I can be healthy <laughs> if I want to, <laughs> you know, once in a you while. have it so much, uh, like you have it figured out. I'm That's down. the way to do it. I'm going to try your plan for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I was one of those people that didn't lose a single pound when I was nursing. Oh, really? No, I just, my body held on to. I think it just wanting to like keep my milk supply up. I didn't, and I, I was, I had obviously started like exercising when I was allowed to. And, um, this has been a totally different experience this time around than the first time. But when I stopped nursing, I lost all my weight. Oh, but that's, I mean, people say that it's just different for everyone. Yeah. I but I some, wanted to be one of those people that started nursing and it was just like just falling off the of me. Baby sucks it right out of you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I see people that actually lose so much weight. They just, they look like they're having trouble. Yeah. And then, um, as soon as they stop nursing, they can gain it back. But I, then I see with our patients, also the same thing that you. Oh, I feel so bad for those people. <laughs> uh, was was you know what? I boxed? I I ran up and down this hill that I live on, and I boxed. It's so. a pretty steep hill. I had a trouble driving up that hill. <laughs> <laughs> um, was was nursing difficult? I I he he latched on right away, which was great. You know what? That's how my mom helped me. You just helped me remember something. I'm really so lovely. glad I can help. My mom helped me figure out. My mom grabbed my boob at the hospital. <laughs> I was like, "Here is how you do it." Wow. Yeah, and that and it was. And I had no idea. I mean, I had like read and watched, and but you just don't know how to do this. These things are so hard. It's a learning curve. Yeah. And also, you point out something really interesting. Like a hundred years ago, which is not that long ago in history, we kind of lived with our families and villages, and mm. you were always around pregnancy and birth and breastfeeding, and so you didn't necessarily really need lactation consultants and doulas and night nurses. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of like what happened for you. Your mother, she had experience with it. She saw you need a little help, and mm-hmm. she was there. Totally. And and it was amazing. The thing I told you, I was like, everything kind of just worked out. It was like, my sister was really there for me during the birth, during that whole process of like the pushing and the whatever, you know? And then my mom helped me nurse. Like that, everyone kind of had a, a role. A role. And it was really quite lovely. And then um, Luca came home and he had jaundice. Like the doctor called me and was like, actually, he's really has high levels of bilirubin or whatever, you know, and he needs to be on the light. And I'm like, I don't even think I stayed at the hospital for 24 hours after I had him. So there was a little bit of a like curve once we got home for the nursing thing, Mm -hmm. but we got back on track. It was just the first three weeks were so painful. I mean, most of our first time moms, 
I would say most of them say that there's at least one or two times where they feel like I'm going to quit. I'm not going to do this. Yeah. And for then sure. they get help or they plow through it and then it, it becomes easy for, yeah. for most of them. Yeah. And, and and it did become easy and I loved it, but there was definitely tears and I mean, they baby shark your nipples <laughs> and you're like, I am going to, this, this, it's going to fall off. Like this is, this feels horrible. That made me have tears. What? That made me have tears. <laughs> Just- um, but then it was nice. You know, I, we, I nursed him. For seven months, and that was enough for me, and then we were done. It's kind of amazing that your body takes a sperm and an egg that you can't even see and grows a full-size human child out of it, Mm -hmm. and then you figure out how to bring it through your body into the world Mm -hmm. one way or another, Mm -hmm. and then you freaking make food for it. It's just incredible. By the way, you make food for it for as long as... You're asking your body to make food for it. Yeah. It's totally No matter weird. what you eat, like if you have my diet or your diet, you still make food for it. It's incredible. I'm blown away by it, and I've been doing this for a long time. Um, so as we record this now, Luca is six, and you're expecting a girl. You're in the zone, that 37 to 42-week zone, mm-hmm. um, the window known as term, and you're getting close. Uh, you sort of said you had a sign this morning. So, Dr. B, how do you think my uh, general attitude <laughs> It is. I think it's great. <laughs> tell the truth. You can tell everybody. You're, well, let's see as we continue to talk about this birth because, you know, it's a different plan. But I, what's really amazing about you is you say what's on your mind. You say what's in your heart. You say how you're feeling. So whatever your attitude is, you're not lettering. Feeling frustrated. <laughs> Are you feeling frustrated? No, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling uh, like I want to control the situation. You want to control. Yeah. Like that's your thing. Not normally. I'm telling you, I'm not a total control freak. But right now, I, I, I'm I, over it. Well, I my sense of you is if there's something big in front of you to do, mm-hmm. you look at it, what has to be done, size it up, figure out what you have to do, and get it done. Yeah. But you can't fully do that here. You sort of have to like lay back. Oh, that's why I'm frustrated. <laughs> I know. That's why you're frustrated. I, I, I used the term control freak with you before, but I don't really mean control freak in that way. I just mean... Surrender is not your strong point. Right. So, and it comes in handy here. So, um, how's pregnancy been the second time? How did you find out you were pregnant this time? Uh, the same way I found out the first time. You knew right away? I knew right away. Like, well, we just did it. Yep. I was like, that's the time. That's crazy. Yeah, it's weird. I get, re- I get um, symptoms so fast. Wow. And uh, you took a test. And it was negative. Same on Valentine's thing. Day. Oh, yeah. really? My, my, but you still knew. I knew. You're like, yeah, the test is wrong. Yeah. My boyfriend and I were moving to New York. I, I shoot a show in New York for four months out of the year. Yeah. And um, I had been there doing promo for a week. He flew out for one day for Valentine's Day. I thought we were going to be apart for Valentine's Day. He flew out to New York just to like take me out to dinner. And then we were just going to fly home together. And then we were coming back the following week because I was going to start shooting and he was going to start making a record. And I took the test on Valentine's Day. It said no. We were both kind of bummed out, but we're like, oh, we'll try again. But I knew. And I took a test a week later. And you were not together. What do you mean? A week later. A week later, we... You're in separate cities. No, he he lived he lives in New York with me. Oh, he was there with you. Yes, because okay. he is making his record. Got it. So you you took the test and that was positive. Uh huh. And well, and that was my first day of work. Oh wow. And he was making his an EP, and he was he had like set up a studio in our apartment. So we I had like a later call time that day. Like usually my call time to like five thirty, and my call time was like seven. And so I was like, we're talking about in the morning. Yeah. Wow, you start early. Yeah, and I work like sixteen hour days sometimes. That's crazy talk. So we um, were like, I'm like, I gotta take another test because I just feel different. I hadn't even missed my period yet, or had I missed my period? Maybe I was like a day late, like oh. nothing to stress about. Okay, unless well, you're control freaky. Uh, there you go again. <laughs> Damn it, I'm pegged. Um, we took a test. It, no, we walked to Starbucks. We talked about taking another test. 
came home, took the test, was positive, and then I had to go to work. And he was like, how can I? And I was like, how can I go to work all day? And he's like, how can you leave me here all day with that my so thoughts hard. and feelings? I know. Hi, our life just changed forever. Bye. Yeah, yeah. 16 hours later. Yeah. Uh, I thought for sure you were going to say you took this test in the Starbucks bathroom. No, but you know what? I have a really sweet friend who had trouble getting pregnant the second time, and uh, she has a son Luca's age. She took the test at Ralph. She started to take all the women at Ralph's started to like cheer for her and root for her and just start begging her to take the test after <laughs> there. And every time she would be like, no, no, no. Uh, and then finally she came out and she was like, yes. And everyone in Ralph's che- cheered for her. Did she name the baby Ralph? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Um, how's pregnancy been the second time around? It's been a dream again. Same, easy for you. Mm-hmm. Not really morning sickness, no crazy no aches or pains. Sickness. A little low back pain, but that's under control. Yeah. I mean, I'm aching. I'm a little achy and I have some, I'm t- You know what? It always gets me in the, in the beginning is I'm so tired. Oh, the energy trimester. level. And that was hard for me because I was working those crazy hours. And, uh. Oh yeah. So you, you, is your character, did your character get run as pregnant? No, no, no. But you were only, you shoot for four months, right? Mm-hmm. So. So I didn't start showing. Yeah. But you were, you were low energy. I mean, it's hard to picture 16 hour work day. Yeah. And heels and like energy. tight fashion clothes <laughs> it was the worst. Yeah, that just made it harder for me to picture myself doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it was already hard being pregnant with low energy. In your, in your fashion clothes. <clears throat> yeah. And my, my heels. <laughs> um, do you get cravings during your pregnancies? Um, I, I craved a lot of salt with Luca. I'm all, I'm such a salty girl. Really? Mm-hmm. And, um, but I did internet research. No bell peppers. Did you know what happened to me after I gave birth to Luca? What? You're all back on bell peppers? I wanted was bell. I wouldn't touch a bell pepper my whole entire life. Really? And the second I gave birth to Luca, I was like, all, all I wanted was raw bell peppers, grilled bell peppers. Like making up for lost time? Like an animal. Just wow. wanting to. What about it. now? Love them. You still love bell peppers? Love them. That's so freaky. Isn't that weird? What a strange twist. I know. Oh. I think they're God's gift to earth. I know I what to bring them. you. <laughs> <laughs> Just peppers, I please. Peppers. Um, I used to hate them so much. Uh, and then this time around, I'm not really a sugar person, and I've wanted a lot of sugar. Oh, really? And I read that. I read that's like very common with girls. So mm. not an exciting pregnancy over here. Well, <laughs> wow. it's still exciting. So... We've been sort of alluding to you changed your birth plan this time around. Mm-hmm. Tell me more about that. Uh, oh, how did I change my birth plan? How did that happen? Did did your change in come before you got pregnant or once you were already pregnant? It happened after I got pregnant, like, but still in my first trimester. I just started thinking that I wanted a different experience and I wanted, I'm older now. I love motherhood more than anything. It just, I never, I never thought it would be this way. I never thought I could be so happy and so fulfilled and it would be, and I, I I don't, it's not easy because being a parent is not easy, but like, it's just a joy. And I thought to myself that I want to like fully get the full experience of, of what it is to birth. of what it is to like bring a baby into the world and how incredible our bodies are. And you know, my body gave me this incredible little boy and now I get to have this little girl and I want I want to experience it to the fullest, I think. And so what plan did you come up with? Having a home birth. A natural drug-free home birth. And you've been on that plan, like with a midwife, since the big, since the first trimester. I um, no, I was traveling so much. I told you I was working in New York, and mm-hmm. I live here in LA. And my son goes to school and um, started first grade in LA. Yeah, and so that was sorry. He was ending kindergarten, but you know he goes to a private school. I can't pull him out. So I was traveling home almost every single weekend. So you're working in New York. 
And then hopping on a plane Friday night. Weekends and you're pregnant and you're working crazy hours in yeah. heels. Yeah. It's a dedicated mom. I mean, can't, I can't not see my kid. Of course. It was just, I'm trying to picture it. It's such a, it's a lot. You know, <laughs> the, the, the um, flight attendants on JetBlue uh-huh. all got to know me so well <laughs> that they would, I'd fall asleep in my chair before the plane would take off and I would wake up. And they would have like reclined my chair for me, uh, which was so sweet because they were like, finally, like, what do you do? Why do you fly so much? And blah, blah, blah. It was really, really sweet. I got to try Jibla. It's great. Um, so I was having the normal experience with my, my regular doctor because I felt comfortable with him. And I knew I just needed to get home. Like I needed to just get through it. But really in your first trimester, you're not like not visiting the doctor that, that much. Yeah. yeah. So then I, we, you know, I talked to Matt about home birth and like wanting to have that experience. And I, you know, which documentary I watched. You watched the business of being born. I sure did. It's the one that gets everybody. It got me good. (laughs) Damn Ricky Lake. Yeah. Um, Well, hold on a second. This is his first. Yes. How did he feel when you brought up home birth? You know what? He was amazing. He's, he was, you know, he had some questions and he was like, let me go and do some research, but I support you. And I, he kind of has this whole very relaxed, um, I don't want to say relaxed because he is, he does a lot of research hmm. um, and he likes to be informed, um, but he has been so supportive and like, I'm here with you. And if this is what you think, like he has that vibe of like, everything's going to be okay too. He's just very like positive and supportive. Not so controlling. I'm just wondering if opposites attract is all I'm saying. Um, (laughs) (laughs) He's controlling in the same way as I am, like with work or, you know, wanting to control elements of, of life, but knowing when to like hang back and kind of like let other things take over. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. It's, it sounds like a good balance. We are a good balance. What? How would you compare your midwifery care versus your obstetric care experiences? So we met with a few midwives and kind of, you know, started flirting with this idea. And we're both not super, we're spiritual people. We're not, we're not religious people. We have faith, you know, but it's not like we don't go to church. Um, And we were a little scared by being too, like, into this. I don't want to offend anyone because, like, it seems all very hippy-dippy. Yeah, it really does. Look, I always thought you had to be like a tree-hucking, vegan, Prius-driving hippie to have a home birth. I really, when I first heard about it, I thought, oh, that's the, the extreme hippie people that do that. Yeah. But now it's like in my career, I've met so many people, I doctors, I, obstetrician who mm-hmm. had home birth with a midwife. So, um, you know, just very what you what I would consider like much more in the middle in mm-hmm. terms of hippie versus non hippie. You mean yourself? Myself like, too. Yeah. Like oh, for what I observed, and then we had a home birth also, mm-hmm. and I never, you know, I I never pictured us having mm-hmm. home birth. So. We were a little, we, we had like a lot of different experiences like, oh, okay, that's a little too far over there for us. Yeah. Okay. That's a little, maybe like we, we want to, we want somewhere in the middle. And so we finally found that and, uh, I lost track of what your question your mid, was. Your midwifery care. How is your. Oh, it's been when we finally found who we wanted, which was Beth, who was so lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, we left our appointment. We're like, oh my God, well, we just. Sat. I I had a, a meeting with her that wasn't too long. It was probably an hour, and said more words to her than I ever said to my OB. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a different experience. It's a different experience. It's a lot more. There's a lot more like open communication and dialogue, and a comforting feeling. If you could picture your birth, if you could direct it, how would you want it to go? <sighs> I would like to be milling around my house, still involved, still doing things, still, you know, popping in and out with Luca, 
maybe going for a walk in the neighborhood, throwing the ball for the dog, making a snack, maybe watching something on TV. Like I, I, I just like picture myself kind of being busy and working through, you know, whatever the process is, is going to put in whatever the process is that's in front of me. And, uh, I can then see myself maybe being alone for a bit in my room with Matt. Um, maybe without Matt for a little bit. I don't, I don't know. I'm thinking of that elephant that you showed me. Yeah, we watched an elephant birth. It's called Risky Business on YouTube. I tend to go inward um, when I'm figuring something out. And he notices it in me a lot, which is funny because we have a really great way of communicating but he'll be like, hey, are you in there? <laughs> and he knows that I just need, I need to like hash some stuff out, you know, and I need to do that alone a lot. And I feel like maybe during this process that might happen a few times. Um, and then I really, my hopes and dreams are to give birth in the tub. Yeah. Have you now watched more births or mm -hmm. water births? Have you been to anybody else's births? I have not. I've, I've been to my sister's birth in the hospital. Okay. Um, never been to a home birth? No. Have you watched videos of home births? Yes, many. And? You know what? Some really move me. And uh, some of them I'm just, I mean, take like taken by. And some of them scare me. And um, I mean, there's some where... The women look so calm and they're just handling what's in front of them. Uh, and then the other ones, you know, I'm just not as affected by, I think. How did you get the house ready? Oh my gosh, it's been a lot of work. It is That is kind of one nice thing about the hospital. You kind of just go with your bag and they're like, have everything that you need. This is, you know, well, I mean. People compare it to eating at a restaurant versus, you know cooking a meal and eating and then having to deal with the dishes and all that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have, I mean, you know, you saw the Rubbermaid containers upstairs with everything. It, it is nice to have an organized midwife who tells me all the supplies I'm going to need, but you know, we sterilized everything in the, in the oven yeah. and, um, bought new sheets. <laughs> who knows? What if I don't want to be in the bathtub? You know, we're prepared for that too. You never know. Um, you have options. Yeah, but there, there's also, you know, I made I made the board that I showed you upstairs. The vision board. The vision board. It's beautiful. Thank you. There's so many good images on there. Thank you. It's a work in progress. Yeah, there's still a little space on there. Yeah. And you, you might have a couple of days left. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, what are you, what are your fears? I guess just that I can't do it, that I'm not... I, I don't even like to put that out there because I know I know that I'm powerful and I know that I, I don't have much to compare this to. Like there's been so many challenges in my life that I've had to be brave for. And there's been with my personal life or with work. And I've 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 navigated it and I figured it out and I've done things that I didn't think I was capable of. And I know that this will be a similar experience, but when there's pain involved, it scares me. It really scares me. Like I think enduring contractions. And uh, I mentioned this to you once before of not knowing, not being able to put a time frame on something, you know, n not having finite answers of like, this is going to be eight hours and it's going to be one of the most challenging things you've ever done. But in eight hours, it's going to be over and you're going to be holding your baby. That That's not like, <laughs> that's not the truth. Right. The most specific we can get is this is not going to go on forever. Right. That's tough. That's not as like concrete for me to hold on to. Well, it's like a marathon. It, marathons are hard and it's a part physical and part psychological, but it's, you know, it's 26 miles. So if you run six, you know, you have 20 to go. Birth is like a marathon, but we're not telling you how long it is. Mm -hmm. That's, that equation doesn't really... <laughs> 
always work for my brain. Well, I'm not saying, I'm saying that's why it's challenging yes. for you, the way your mind operates. If I told you to, you had to run a marathon and I will tell you when it's over, you know, it's very hard to. I think I'm not, I'm not as scared of like the pushing part. I think once that is in front of you and every video I've watched, women are so ready to push. It's just that instinctual part that takes over. I think it's going to be the enduring, the contractions that scare me the most. Who's coming to this birth? Matt, obviously. Luca wants to be here. He doesn't want to be in, in the room when it happens, which I totally understand. But he wants to help do the well baby check, which is awesome. Uh, my sister, my mom, there's three midwives on my birthing team. Um, I have an amazing doula named Daisy who's oh, going to be here. Amazing. Yeah. And um, I might be sending you a text begging you to come. I will come with the ramen bowl. <laughs> and the, the, four, the four dogs. And um, I think that'll be it. Sounds like enough. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a full house. Yeah. I mean, you've surrounded yourself with a really cool team of very seasoned people. And just really soulful people who are book smart and street smart. Mm -hmm. And I think that they're, if you have any kind of trouble finding your own strength and your own ability to surrender and feel safe, you've really surrounded yourself with people who will help you do that. I really feel confident that that's the truth. And uh, I know you've had experiences with, with all of them. And um, I mean, I only hear amazing things. So I'm really looking forward to my own experience. And um, and I know everything will go exactly the way that it's supposed to. And do you have a medical backup plan if you want it or need it? I do. Mm -hmm. So if if you end up going there, because when I said, what's your fear? Your fear was, I, my, what if I can't do it? If you end up going there, let's say it just overwhelms you and you're tired or exhausted and you just want to go get an epidural, will that will that be a downer for you? I think I will feel like I failed. Yeah, I don't see it that way at all. You don't? I think I'll feel like I failed, but I have to tell you that I have the sweetest partner on the planet Earth who's like, he calls me Ba. He's like, Ba, if we go to the hospital and you get an epidural, like, so what? You labored at home. And then you're going to the hospital to have your baby. Like there's no failure here. We're going to end up with a baby at the end of this. And you just labored at home. And then we went to the hospital. See, I have this thought that nobody should suffer in childbirth today, right? Pain is one thing, but suffering is another thing. So if you're in pain and you can surrender and relax into it, great. Sometimes you relax so much it's not even, doesn't seem that painful. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's pleasurable. I've seen that or it's a mix of pain and pleasure or just pressure. But suffering's different. Suffering is when your mind goes to a bad place where you have a negative emotional reaction to pain. I I don't think that I I don't think I'm going to suffer and I I have this very calm feeling that everything's going to go like nothing's going to go wrong with me with the baby. I don't have that kind of fear. That like, oh my God, we're at home. We're not at a hospital. There, there's no doctor here. There's not, mm -hmm. I don't have those fears. Yeah. I have the fear of how I'm going to endure the pain. Like I don't like to be in pain. I don't like to be uncomfortable. Uh, I think you're going to kick it. Cool. I think you're going to be a G. Cool. <laughs> did I use that right? Yes, you but, did. I'm so proud of you. Actually, it's different than the way you use it. I think goddess. Goddess. I'll take it. That's Still a G. G. Yeah. G for goddess. <laughs> Uh, all right. I have a couple more questions. So it's, uh, time has flown by. Um, you haven't really discussed your home birth plans publicly. Mm -hmm. Was that deliberate? Yes, absolutely. Why? I don't really want to, I mean, if you think about how long I've been in the public eye for, everyone has an opinion on everything I do. And I don't think it's anybody's business, but my own and my partner's. And um, I fully plan to share my birth story, but I would like to experience it first. That's fair enough. Yeah. And I, and I, and I don't want to hear people's opinions. It's like sharing your baby name, you know. I've, I've told a lot of uh, friends, obviously, that were having a home birth. And I'd say the majority of the reaction is very positive, And other people are 
totally sketched out by it. And the people who are sketched out by it, do they try to talk you out of it? Some people. Yeah. Or there's just like a, a blanket of judgment happening that is apparent. Yeah. It's, I mean, people have pretty strong feelings about it. I think. And that's fine, but I just don't, I'm not interested in the public making comments on my Instagram oh, yeah, or, <laughs> you know, stories about what they, <laughs> you know, what they believe because they can have their own children in the way that they want. I mean, is it hard to be pregnant in the public? Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm followed by paparazzi every day. And I'm <laughs> this pregnant. Like, it's horrible. I hate it. Oh, I'm sorry. But, you know, for the, for the most part, I am very used to it. And I can block it out and ignore them. But there's a lot of feelings going on right now. You know, there's a lot, I look so different. I feel so different. I'm, I feel like I'm a lion right now, you know, walking with my kid and I'm pregnant. Like, I don't want anyone too close to me taking pictures, violating my space and my time with my family. And, uh, there's no way to control it. So it's frustrating. It seems really invasive. I mean, the other day I was at your office and the guy's like taking pictures of me Waiting for the elevator. Yeah, because oh, he just followed me there. Yeah. Oh, one of your guys? Oh, I, I once walked somebody out. She must have been, maybe she was 24 with her first kid. Mm -hmm. And she came by herself. And um, we could just see from the fifth floor, by the time she was ready to leave, there must have been 75 people there. Yeah, just multiplies, right? Yeah, so I walked her out, and it was just a storm. I don't know how you do that, really. It's really hard. It's really, one, it's scary, and it's so, it's so gross to, to treat a human being like that. In, and they in, were the, in this mean stage. to each other. They were like fighting Oh, they fight? Oh, yeah. And they yell things at me. I mean, it's so funny. Like, if I cover my face with something, they're like, you're so mean now. Because you covered your face and I'm to like, try to get a little <laughs> privacy? Yeah. Yeah. I'm they like, yelled at I'm me, so too. I'm so mean now. Someone said to Matt the other day, you know who you got involved with? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh. They yelled at me. They said, Rabbi, how long have you known this person? I was like, ooh, cool. I'm a rabbi now. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's wild. Do you ever, I mean, I think a lot of people wonder what it would be like to like grow up and become famous. Do you ever wonder what it would be like to just be anonymous? Oh, yeah. I do daydream about it all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't like to complain because honestly, I have a really wonderful life. But it it is a it's a constant choice to block that stuff out and you know ignore it and try to live like everybody's not watching. You know? Are you planning to take pictures or video at your birth? Yes. Oh Both? yeah, that's the other person that's going to be there. I'm so sorry. Oh, have a, we have a birth photographer named Rebecca. And she going to take pictures and video. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Do you have from your first birth? I did not have anyone doing photos no there. Pictures, no I have video. I have pictures, but like iPhone pictures that oh, my yeah. sister and well, family are taking. iPhones are pretty good. Yeah. Um, all right. Anything else you want to share that I didn't ask you? <sighs> I don't think so. I mean, we're going to talk again. We're going to talk again. <laughs> I can't wait to talk again. Um, I do have one burning question. Do you have a favorite role that you've ever played? Nothing to do with pregnancy and childbirth. <laughs> or motherhood. Or motherhood. Um, favorite role that I've ever played. I hope I haven't had it yet. Well, to date. I think, I mean, my favorite Hilary Duff is clearly Wendy. <laughs> Wendy meets Casper. So. You're close. Casper meets Wendy. So close. Okay. Um, I just want to. I want to get. How did you get into books? Oh my god, writing books was the hardest thing I've ever done. I never want to do it again. Really? You're not going to write anymore? I don't want to say never, but that was so hard. I I wrote three books, and it was it was the hardest thing I've ever done. It's like having a baby. Yeah, and just like I, I would love to write again, but maybe like a script and 
shorter, less, uh, <laughs> like, I don't know, not such an extensive thing. This was so hard. Books are hard. Yeah. I mean, people who I know who have babies and who have books, like, really say that it's, it's like having a baby. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I experienced it in that way. <laughs> but, um, Maybe next time you can have a home book. A home book. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, I love talking. You're very real. I feel like there's nothing, whatever comes into your mind, like you're very, you share, you talk about it. Yeah. And, um, I think that a lot of the things that you have experienced and that you are experiencing are things that other people also have and they also experience, but they don't always get to talk about it, um, or feel comfortable talking about it. So I really appreciate you sharing your personal stories. And, uh, yeah, I definitely, I will come running if you call me and <laughs> I look forward to talking to you on the other side and finding out how your story was. Thank you. I, um, I feel so lucky for everyone that I've encountered, even just through this, this process of, of, you know, doing things a little bit differently this time around, like yourself included and some of the wisdom that you've said to me and, or <clears throat> the stories that you've shared and same with my, my midwives and my doula. I mean, everyone has been incredibly supportive and it's like this, this, this wealth of knowledge that everyone has of this kind of like, it's not secretive, but not everyone goes this route. So, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to be shared and all the brave women that I've seen in videos and the way that they're sharing their stories. I mean, that it's, it's the most personal private thing that you can do. Yeah, and people are just putting it on the internet, like yeah. and to now share Instagram that with allows me. Allows them, so it's amazing. I feel so grateful to all these people I don't know for me to get a glimpse of how they're doing it, so I can potentially do it too. You yeah, know, it's really cool. Well, I think it's going to be a great journey, no matter what. Thank you, and I can't wait to come back and hear the rest of it. Thank you. At home, thanks for listening to the Informed Pregnancy Podcast. If you have a topic you want to hear, send us a note at info at informedpregnancy.com. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a whole lot.